Hey, I'm Blaine Bartell. Welcome to another edition of Fire by Night. It's great to have you with us on the program. This month, we have got Milan Lefebvre and Broken Heart. Tremendous band. You're going to love them. And we're going to be talking about the truth about rock and roll music. And there's so many other great surprises we've got. I'd like... What do you mean, cut? B-Tel Records presents Elvis Sings Secular Hits That Feed the Spirit. That's right. Now you can hear the king himself sing secular songs that glorify and lift up God. This fabulous three-record set includes such classics as... And, uh... And who could forget, uh... uh that's right! This double album set contains secular songs guaranteed not to tear down your spirit, such as... You ain't nothing but a... Wait a minute, man. That ain't gonna be on there. You'll feel the anointing as he sings. And I did it my Wait a minute, baby. That ain't gonna be on there either. But wait! There's more! Free with this single album is a 30-second video cassette with stirring testimonies of people who have been born again through the use of secular music. These songs have always held a special place in my heart, and I know they're gonna bless you, too. Oh, come on, man! There's gotta be something we can use! To receive your 45 single of Elvis Sing Secular Hits that feed your spirit, send $8 to BTL Records, Post Office Box 12. That's all the address you need. And as soon as we find it, we'll send it to you. Mama! Welcome to St. Cornelius Hospital, the hospital with <laughs> a difference. Doctor, there's a man in line one who wants to know if raw oysters are healthy. Well... If they eat right, get plenty of sleep, and cut down on salt, they shouldn't have any problem whatsoever. Here, nurse, why don't you close for me? I've got a patient in the lobby. A definite metal case. Metal case? What is it? Well, it's a small square box with a handle on it. I use it to bring my lunch in sometimes. But that's not important right now. Aha! I see we have a definite case of metal head. Oh, uh, yes. What kind of doctor are you? Well, I'm a naval surgeon. <sighs> Oh, his navel's doing just fine. It's his head I'm concerned about. Oh, yeah? Why? What's he doing? Well, he listens to rock and roll music all the time, and this changed his whole personality. Really? How's that? Well, he won't listen to a word I say, and he stays out all night trying to figure out where the sun goes when it sits. I see. Well, has it finally dawned on him? Excuse me, doctor. There's a man in line one that wants to know what is the name of a tourniquet worn on the left hand to stop circulation. Well, that would be a wedding ring, of course. Ah, disorderly. Come here. What's the medical history on this patient? Well, he listens to rock and roll 24 hours a day, including a heavy diet of Twisted Sister, Rat, Bon Jovi, an occasional dose of the Eagles, the Birds, and the Partridge family. Sounds pretty foul. You should have seen the TV show. Ah, nurse, nurse. Did you call me doctor? Call you a doctor? Why would I call you a doctor? I'm a doctor. Okay, nurse, take this metal monster and prep him for surgery, would you please? Ooh, doctor, doctor. What do you prescribe for my son's skin condition? The nastiest looking kid I've ever seen. Well, lady, if I were you, I'd take him home and bathe him in milk. Would it be pasteurized? No, just up to his chin is fine. Ah, my name is Mr. Tor, but you can call me Doctor. And this is my assistant, Miss Uri. Nurse Uri to you. So what do you think you're going to do to me, Doctor? Well, kid, you've got a definite case of mental fatigue, otherwise known as trash on the brain. We're going to have to go in and do neurological surgery to clean up your mind. Well, Doc, what are you going to use for anesthesia? Oh. Ah, anesthesia. He said the secret word. He wins an extra hundred dollars off the cost of his surgery. Well, we're going to use Coca-Cola, of course. Oh, that's new. Well, no, actually, this is classic. What about me? I thought you'd never ask. Oh. Scalpel, please, nurse. Thank you. Can opener. Screwdriver. Pastrami sandwich. What? No miracle whip? Henway? What's a Henway? Well, about 10 pounds, but that's not important right now. Let's see. Uh-huh. Wishbone. <laughs> Your turn, nurse. Just kidding. Is this room completely germ-free? It's clean. Good. Let's put on our masks. Could be a clean sweep. Ah, I think we're coming to the source of this young man's problem. Hmm, let's see here. Ah, drumsticks. Yeah, this kid ain't Ringo. Ah, 
An album. Terrible. Aha! Hit Parader. Terrible. What else we got? Ah, look at this. Boombox. Hmm. Ah, but there it is. Looks to be in pretty awful shape, nursery. I know what I would do now, Doctor. Oh, why don't you show me, Missouri? Well, it's right here, right above Arkansas. That's not important right now. What's important is getting this boy's mind cleaned up. Ah, uh, just as I suspected. His mind is unrenewed. There's only one hope for him, Missouri. The washing of water by the word. What's the reference on that procedure? Ephesians 5:26. Doc. Yes. Uh, only God's word can clean up a trashy brain like this. Oh, and this is one of the trashiest brains I've ever seen. Ah, well on our way to being renewed. Ah, renewed! Let's get it back in there, nursery. This boy's going to have a brand new thought life. Okay, let's sew him up. <laughs> ah, well, how do you feel, kid? Like new. What'd you do, Doc? Well, we had to go in and clean out your mind with the Word of God. But from now on, kid, that's going to be your job. It's up to you to keep your own mind clean. Hey, there's nothing wrong with listening to music. You just got to listen to the right stuff. You know what I mean? No more twisted, sinister, Billy idolatry, or David brain rot for you. Here, take a dose of this every day. What do we owe you? Oh, ma'am, it's been paid in full. Thanks, Doc. Finally. Hey, Doc, do you know that new patient art? Art. Art who? Artesian. Oh, Artesian. Yes, I know Artesian well. Hey, let's go take a break. in Christian music, went into secular, and now really come strong back into Christian again. What, what happened over those years? I think that it'd be easiest summed up, but my parents were Christians, and my granddad was a preacher. And I think that in my youth, I accepted Christ as my Savior, but not as my Lord. I didn't know that um, I needed him to make decisions for me. I wanted to run my own life, and I thought, you know, if I, in other words, I gave him my sin life. I gave him the things that I didn't want, but those areas where I felt like I was strong, I didn't want to mess with that, and I was possessive about those things, and of course, as you know, that won't work. What was it that really brought you back to the Lord? Well, I think that uh, the drug addiction, you know, I started out just smoking a little dope and uh, um, thinking this is healthy, you know, this is just herb and all that. And, and all I can tell you is that it was about four years later I had been a, uh, cocaine had become my drug of choice and then heroin. And uh, after 16 years of free base and all, well, every day, I mean, cocaine was a, was a daily part of my life. And for four and a half years, heroin was too. And I literally lost my marriage, came apart my, um, a lot of friends that I knew really, really good died because of it. And a lot of the rest of them had gotten to the point where they just, I mean, there's some of them that are still alive today. And they can still make music. They can still go through the motions. And yet, when it comes to their personal life, I don't know of any whose marriages stayed together. Or they're, and they got kids everywhere. And there is no love and there's depression. That's what happened to me. I mean, I was just so depressed. I, but I remembered out of my childhood, God, I can't remember how long it's been since I had any peace in my life. I'd made a couple million dollars at that point. By the world standards, I'd been successful. And yet I was lonely and I was depressed and I was suicidal and uh, just going from one uh, high to the other and, and yet none of it was doing any good, just trying to keep my brain numb. And I just came to God and asked him to forgive me and just said, Lord, you know, I, I've been around the world and I've seen what the world has to offer and I either want you to I would see people on TV like this. I think I was somewhere in Montana or someplace on a, a opening for the Who, and we were having really big crowds and everything, but it was like 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. One of those Christian shows was on, I think it was PTO or Seven Hundred Club or something. And these people were sitting on this crowd, couch worshiping the Lord, and they were crying. It had to be PTO, come to think of it. 
because uh, anyway they were crying and they were talking about the joy of the Lord and I was thinking how foreign that is to me I can't relate to the joy of the Lord doesn't make any sense I don't remember anything in my life that I can relate to the joy of the Lord and I just remember that I stopped though and started praying God there's got to be a better way than this if you can save me and if you can change that so I asked him to forgive me and he did and and that was just an amazing I mean I still can't get over it I still can't get over the fact that God forgave me of my sins, that he baptized me in his spirit. You know, the Bible says after that the Holy Spirit came upon them, they were given power. And he gave me the power, and it wasn't power to be uh, super religious, but he gave me the power to witness about Jesus with great effect. And that amazes me that I go from town to town every day, and I just talk to people and tell the truth as I know it about Jesus Christ. And, and share his word. As you know, faith comes from hearing the word of God. And people's faith rises up in their heart until God can reveal more truth to them. And he just changes their lives. And it's what he's done for me. It's changed my mind. It's changed my attitudes. I, I don't have any struggle with uh, taking dope. I can't imagine having to take any dope. You know what I mean? It's like, he's just set me free. called Trains Up in the Sky with all these Indians and you got guys running around in the water. What exactly are you trying to communicate in this video? Why don't you set it up for us? All the guys dancing around the campfire, that's just us with makeup on. It's some of our road crew and drivers and stuff. And uh, we were just trying to entertain the kids some and still bring home the uh, look up. The Bible says look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And we want to get people's minds on the Lord and off of what's going on on the planet. Because the planet's not, and God's in charge of it all. It doesn't matter what Muammar Gaddafi does. He's in no control of anything. And when you know the Lord, you don't have to have any fear. You don't have to fear death, hell, and the grave. Christ took the keys to those things, and we're free from all that. You know, and so by the end of the story, if you'll watch, we're missing it then. You know, which should let people know to get ready for that, because there's going to come a day when I don't know what you're going to be doing, but I ain't going to be here anymore. Yeah. Look up.
This is a Jerusalem News Update with Ned Koppelstein. Shalom, I'm Ned Koppelstein, son of Shem, the tent peg maker. The big story tonight is the destruction of the entire Ammonite, Moabite, and Mount Seir armies, apparently by their own swords. This is the work of one of the most unbelievable battle strategies by the king, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, under a quote, commissioned by the Lord, had placed his singers and musicians at the front of Judah's army going into the battle in the wilderness of Tekoa. For more on this bizarre story, we go live to JNU correspondent Irving R. Ravenberg, son of Claude the Commentator. Irving, what's the story there? Well, Ned, you've heard of the Battle of the Bands. This is the story of one band that actually fought a battle. They did so without firing one arrow, thrusting one sword, or throwing one spear. I have with me now Philippi Driscoli, the lead horn player for the band. Philippi, if you could, please tell us exactly what happened here today. Listen, man, check it out. King Jahaz called all his music cast together to lead the army. And we're not going to argue. Besides, sometimes us music guys get a bad rap. People say we don't have much of a place in this kingdom. All we do is sit around and sing and play music and dive like that. But I'll tell you what, more than a few eyebrows are raised when God himself called the musicians to lead the army into battle. But you haven't answered my question, Philippi. What happened here? How did all of these men get killed? What did you do? Beat them to death with your horns? No, man, check it out. We were marching, we started jamming and praising God, then we locked into this funky little groove, right? And the Spirit of God just fell upon us, and Amos was wailing on his harp, Ham was cooking on his bass drum, and pretty soon the whole army was just praising God, baby. It was beautiful, I'm serious. You talk about a heavenly noise, it was powerful. We were going to make a five-tablet set of it. Yes, I believe I've heard of that. King J. Haas and the Praise Street Band. I believe it's coming out on compact tablet soon, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, what happened next? Well, we came around the corner and there was just dead bodies as far as the eye could see. I mean, the battle was already won, baby. I'm serious. God defeated our enemies because we obeyed him and we used our music gift to praise him. Those guys just killed each other, baby. Each other. They must have got pretty crabby. I don't know. They must have. Wow, man. Who mixes your sound? Must be killer. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, well, uh, what's the next stop on your tour? I don't want to be there. No, no, it's not like every time we play, someone dies, man. God uses us for his glory, to lead people into his presence. And as far as our tour, man, from here, we're going up to Jerusalem tomorrow for an all-day festival. We're calling it Fishnet 600 BC, man. It's going to be a good time. Oh. And uh, we're going to have two bands from Capernaum, one from Jericho, and a new band from Petra coming down. We're going to praise God and jam all day. I'm serious, man. I'll tell you what, I got to go. But uh, here's a few backstage passes for you and the little lady, huh? Ciao, baby. Well, thank you, Philippi. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the story of a band that worked a large number of people into quite a frenzy, much worse than last year's Tiberian slam dance incident. Back to you, Ned. Thank you, Irving. In a news conference held just moments ago, the king said, and we quote, 
It just goes to show you God can use all kinds of music, even the stuff that gets a little loud, unquote. A little loud, King? <laughs> Way to knock them dead, boys. That's news to this hour. I'm Ned Cobblestein, son of Shem the Ten Peg Maker. For Jerusalem News Update, Shalom. The topic this month is the truth about rock and roll music. There was a guy that said, I believe the guitar could be mightier than the bomb. And in a way, I believe that because music is a very powerful force to reach a generation. You know, the question in the church today is, can rock music be used by Christians to lead other people to the Lord, to uh, minister to, to young people? And I believe we need to address that. I decided the only way really to address that is by going into the Word of God. So I did a study. I began to look into the Word, and I looked up the word song in the New Testament and the Old Testament. And I found that the word song is in there 98 times. And out of those 98 times, not once did it ever talk about the beat or the volume of the song. It talked about the heart of the person singing it, the character, and the words that were brought forth. So God isn't so concerned with the volume or the beat or the style of music. He's concerned with the person that's delivering it, their heart, and what's in it and what's coming out. So we need to uh, really make sure that if we're involved in music ministry, that we have right character and right heart before the Lord. And don't be judgmental just because a style doesn't necessarily go along with your style. There was a time when uh, Jimmy Swaggart's music wasn't even accepted in the church, and, and today it's widely accepted. So new styles and new uh, ways of presenting music will always be there, but make sure that the, the lifestyle and the, the person delivering it is, is right with the Lord. And then also, uh, there are basically three ways that music can be used. A lot of people say that music's only for worship, and unless it's bringing people into worship, it's no good. Well, that's not true. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians uh, 5.19 and Colossians, 316 that there are three ways we can use music. Number one, music can uh, be used to edify and encourage ourselves. It says that we can speak to ourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We can be edified. I know when I listen to good Christian music, it blesses me, and it edifies me. And also, it can be used to speak to others. We can use music to exhort other people in the Word of God and in truth. And the third thing is we can use music to minister unto the Lord and glorify Him. So let's use music, let's use it for God's purpose, and let's glorify him with it. Hi, welcome to What's Hot. I'm Ron Luce and we're going to check out What's Hot in today's Christian music. Have you ever wondered what happened to the members of the Sweet Comfort Band? Randy Thomas, the former lead guitarist for the group, has started a new group called The Allies. They've already released their second album titled Virtues as they boldly pursue Christian rock and sing about important Christian issues in every tune they play. Rick Kua, formerly of the secular rock group The Outlaws, has returned to what he calls intense rock and roll with his fourth solo album, Warrior Colors. Recently, The Outlaws called Kua and asked him to return to the band, but he refused, being determined to wear his colors and encourage others to live what they believe. Now, it's time for our 5 by Night Top 10 Countdown. Well, that's what's hot, and I'm Ron Luce. We'll see you next month. Ron, you lived in the world of rock and roll for a number of years. What are some of the dangers for a Christian teenager in listening to secular rock music today? Well, you know, there is a great quote-unquote controversy about rock and roll music, and I don't think the music itself is bad. I think it can be used bad, wrongly. You know, I think that the Bible tells us God created everything. And we know that the evil one, the enemy, will try to take everything that's good that God created and pervert it and use it for some selfish or uh, worldly reason. But I think that the main thing that has to be watched is the life of the people making the music. And I think it's really obvious if you see them on MTV or you see any of the promotions or anything. And I think the lyrics of the songs, in fact, tell how they feel. I think anything, in other words, the Bible tells us that, that Jesus says that we should uh, deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. If the lyrics to a song tell you to never deny yourself anything, if it feels good, do it, well that is a spirit of antichrist. There's not a controversy about that. The Bible says that, that the mind of Christ tells us that we should be uh, obedient to our parents and we should respect them and honor them and obey them. 
Well, if, if this rock and roll music is telling you, hey, if you don't like the way things are, do what you want to, that is a spirit of Antichrist. You know, and it becomes really obvious. It doesn't take much. Uh, you don't have to listen to the records backwards. You don't have to tear up your record player. You just have to be as wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. That's what the Bible says do. And if they are promoting something that is opposed to what the Word of God says is what we should do, then it's not of God. And, you know, there is no gray area. I mean, I try to protect my spirit. Now, I know a lot, you know, I, Elvis cut songs I wrote, and I, the Beatles and the Stones played on my records, and uh, Eric Clapton and uh, Fleetwood Mac and just Billy Joel, a lot of people, Stevie Winwood. I saw, uh, you know, I was doing heroin with Mick Jagger. It's not like I read about him in books. And I understand what's going on in rock and roll. There were some people who were into satanic things, but the bottom line is if you sing in the choir at the church and you don't love God, something's wrong. You don't have to wear, uh, you know, feathers and leathers and lace and bones, you know. What, what Jesus is trying to teach us how to do is to be honest before Almighty God and, and what determines whether what we're doing is right or not is whether it involves sin. Sin doesn't have anything to do with how you wear your hair unless you do it for the wrong reason. It doesn't have anything to do with what kind of clothes you wear. It has to do with, first of all, is Christ first in your life? Do you really believe that he's the Son of God? Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Are you willing to confess it? Are you ashamed of the gospel? Because if you're not, it's the power of God and the salvation. And you need that power of God to walk with him in holiness. You know, God said, be holy for I am holy. And he, he didn't say that to frustrate us or to get us anxiety attacks. He said it because it's possible and you can do it. And, you know, you got to determine whether you trust him or not to want to try to do that. Because I'll tell you this, if you try, man, you'll like it a whole lot better with him in control of your life than you will with you in control. And I tried it the other way for 35 years. So I'll praise you till the mountains reach the sky, till the rivers all run dry. Because of what you. Over the last few years, there's been a lot of Christian artists who have produced an album that crosses over into the secular market. And you guys have done that with your album, Look Up. What is your approach to this game plan? I mean, you're not as upfront lyrically as you have been with some of your other albums. Spiritually, that's a weak album. That album was made shallow, intentionally. Uh, there's a couple songs on there that really have, that bring it home. But you can't really give an invitation on a record, even though we did try it once, as you know, on Word. And by, even this Christian record company freaked out. We did anyway. But you can't really bring people to a conclusion because you don't have enough time to really explain Christ to them and to give them. In order to do that, you've got to have a lot of scripture. You've got to sing the word and you've got to speak the word of God. You know, and, and that's what brings people to repentance. The, the yoke is broken, the, the heart is broken, and, and conviction comes from the Holy Spirit, you know, that rests upon the word of God. But the only place you can do that is in concert. If you get a chance, I mean, if we get a chance to do the David Letterman show, should we do it or not? They're not going to let us preach on there. I wish I could preach on there, but if we get a chance to do that, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to do a song and kick out the gym and sweat a little bit, you know? And, and those kids who like that are going to come to our concerts. Now what's going to happen? We're going to bring those people to, to the point where they have no choice. They either accept or reject Jesus Christ. That's the only thing you can do with him. He's still the Son of God, and he's still the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, and, and what and the only thing that needs to be determined is are you going to even enjoy him, enjoy his presence in your life until he comes again, or you going to submit your life to him. So I think that whatever we do to get the unsaved to come to those concerts, that's what we're trying to do is go out here and get these kids whose parents weren't Christians. We're trying to encourage them to come into a place where we can sit and, and get their attention and set them down for 20 minutes and preach the gospel to them. And if you can figure out another way to do it, Call me, collect, and I'll hit you. Because they're not watching Brother Swagger, and they're not watching uh, the PTL Club. Those kids that go see Twisted Sister and Madonna and Prince, who, by the way, claims to be a Christian. And seeing all that obscenity and seeing all that 
uh, pornography that goes on on stage, if you really believe that nobody needs to go and read them, or if you really believe that it's being done by the church, then I just think we have a communication problem because somebody needs to go. We send missionaries to Africa. We send missionaries to, to India. We send missionaries to those places to minister to them. And yet there is a place called rock and roll that more people live in than any other continent on earth. It goes beyond the barriers of of um, states and, and countries and borders. It goes beyond the barriers of, of the English language or the German language or the French or the Japanese language. There is a place where rebellious youth lives that I refer to as, as the continent of rock and roll. Now, I'm not saying that normal ministry is bad. That's ridiculous. Normal ministry is wonderful, and we are just a small part of the body of Christ, and we're specialists who have been sent back to the gutter that I was saved out of. That's all. Many years on the road, many more miles to go. Hey, Robert, you having fun? Why don't you send in a rescue team to get my Frisbee back? How about it? Thank you. I'll tell you what, this spring break is going to be the best ever. I mean, we've got sunshine, we've got Frisbee football, and I'm going to be giving Cheryl a call, and she's going out on a date with Dougie Collins. <laughs> I can just hear her response now. Oh, Dougie, I thought you'd never ask. But my luck has finally run out. Come on in, Clarence. You ready, Doug? Hey, uh, don't you think you're a little bit overdressed for Frisbee football? I don't know. You know what they say. A Frisbee in the hand is, is worth two in the head. That's what they say. <laughs> How's spring break been going? Well, pretty pitiful so far. But I knew it was going to be bad when I poured me a bowl of Lucky Charms and not one marshmallow. Oh, man. That's terrible. Life can really deal you a raw hand sometimes. Hey, come on. we got to be there in ten minutes. Let's boogie. Come on. Doug, have you got your chores done? Mom, do I have my chores done? Of course. I got my whole half the garage swept completely clean. Good. Just remember your cousin Brian's arriving tonight. Don't remind me. How long is he going to be here again? Three days. And we're going to make him feel welcome, aren't we? I don't remember Brian anyway. What's he like? Oh, he's a real nice young boy. But he does have his problems. Oh, I see. Kind of like Connie. Robert, that's enough. Now you get out there in the garage and do your half. And this time, don't sweep it all on Doug's side. Well, Brian, this is where you'll be staying. Connie's gone on a ski trip with some of her friends, so I thought I'd put you in here. I hope it'll be all right. Oh, thanks, Aunt Shirley. This sure beats my stepdad's apartment. Well, I know life hasn't been easy since your mother left. But we just want to make you feel really at home while you're here. You still have family who loves you. Yeah, yeah. Would it be okay if I play my guitar while I'm here? Sure. In fact, maybe some night you could play a few numbers for the whole family. <laughs> right, Aunt Shirley. Has it been ten years since you were here last? I remember the last time you came. You went to church with us. And you looked so cute in that little suit and tie you had on. In fact, you went down that night and gave your heart to the Lord. Yeah, I guess I did. Well, how do you feel about that now? Well, you know, it was okay at the time. Well, if you need anything, just let me know. Good night. Blow 
the dirt out with Connie's hair dryer. Nah, this is working just fine. Man, I don't remember the sun coming out this early. Early? It's almost 10 o'clock. That's what I mean. Hey, you're Brian, aren't you? Plane got in real late last night, huh? Yeah, plane was late. I don't remember the last time I've seen you. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen you. Where's Doug? He went to the store for Mom. I've got to stay and clean my half of the garage. Doug did his half yesterday. I guess I'm just not into it being spring break and all. Nobody could ever be into cleaning the garage, except for maybe Dog. So, who are you into? Who am I into? Nobody, I guess. I'm just me. <laughs> no, man. Tunes. Tunes? Yeah, rock and roll. The essence of life itself. Bon Jovi, Rat, Van Halen. What's your sound, Scooter? I don't know. I just, I just don't listen to that kind of music. <laughs> what do you listen to? Barry Manilow? <laughs> As the Copa. Copa Cabana. No, it's just my parents taught me not to listen to that kind of music. It's not Christian. Oh, please, Scooter. I can see we need to have a little talk. I used to be just like you until I realized kick and rock and roll is where it's at, man. I play in a band. I know one of Iron Maiden's guitar roadies. You play in a band? Yeah, man. Lead guitar. I've got over 600 albums. See this t-shirt, man? I've got a closet clear full of them. I'm telling you, Roberto, rock and roll will spice up your life. Where do you get all the money for these things? Oh, I manage. Look, look at you, Robert. You're too normal. You, you fit in. You're average. No one would notice you if you climbed a flagpole and set your hair on fire. They would definitely notice you. That's the point. I'm making a statement. I'll tell you what, cuz. I'll give you some private lessons on how to be cool. Welcome to the Mr. Jam School of Rock and Roll. I don't know. You play in a band? Come on, I'll show you some tunes on my axe. Axe? All right, no one's here. I'm gonna call Cheryl right now and I am gonna blow her mind. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, Cheryl, this is Doug. Nah. Cheryl? Doug. That's it, that's it. She is gonna go for this one. <clears throat> Hello, is uh, Cheryl there? Is Cheryl? Is Sh Sh Cheryl there, please? Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Cheryl, this is Dougie Collins. Yeah, from Youth Group. Remember I uh, met you last Friday night and I said I'd call you? Yeah, well, here I am. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to let you know this is your lucky night. Yeah, you've been selected from among thousands of applicants to accompany me on an all-expense paid date for two. Yeah, with me. So what you doing tonight? You're, uh, you're making curtains. Yeah, well, I understand. We, we've got curtains right here at the house, and that, that's very important. Yeah. How about tomorrow night? You're hanging the curtains? Well, sh sure. I mean, why make them if you don't hang them, right? <laughs> that's totally understandable. Hey, next weekend. What you doing next weekend? I see. Uh, you're, you're taking out the storm windows. Mm-hmm. Okay, for sure, yeah. Uh, listen, I'll tell you what, why don't you, when you finish rebuilding your house, just give me a call. I'm here all the time. Okay, great. Hey, I just want to let you know one thing I really like about it, girls like you is that you're up front, you're honest, you just tell it like it is, and I... Hello? Hello? Okay, I'll pick you up at 7 o'clock. Be there. Yeah, I know you do. Goodbye. Hey, Brian, you remember my brother Doug, the Romeo of the family. Hi, Brian. Hey. How you doing? Good times, bad times, you know I've had my share. I've got a handle on it. Yeah, uh, gee, you sure have changed a lot. You know, dog, we all grow up, find ourselves. Yeah, I guess we do. Hey, uh, how about those bears, huh? I saw their video on MTV. There's just not enough lead guitar in the mix for me, man. Oh, there, there sure isn't. 
Listen, uh, we're uh, we're getting ready to go out and play some frisbee football with the gang. Have a blast, fun times. You want to come, you guys? Yeah, let's. No, I promised Scooter we'd go up and chop out a few tunes on my axe. Okay, well maybe you can help me chop some wood next week, eh, Robert? <laughs> come on, Brian. Well, hey, we got all week. We'll see you later, Brian. That, my man, was a riff created by the legend, Eddie Van Halen. Man, you're awesome. Oh, Scooter, you're starting to sound like all my chicks. Brian, doesn't your stepdad care that you look like that? I mean, the earring and listening to that kind of music all the time. My old man don't care what I do. He's not home long enough to know anyway. But I kind of like that, because I can do something you can't do. I have control of my life. I can be my own person. Man, Brian, I could never look like you. My mom would kill me, and then my dad would probably ground me for life. <laughs> Scooter, you're being too hard on your parents, man. They'll come around. My mother was the same way till she left. Hey, I know what we'll do. Let's change you into Scooter. The rock and roller. Don't feel so bad, Clarence. Not everybody can catch a Frisbee. Yeah, but you handed it to me. I dropped it and we lost the game. I mean, that's two days in a row. You've got a point there, and if you keep your hat on, nobody will notice it, all right? <laughs> hey, check it out. How about if I go home and change, then come back here and we practice? Because after all, practice makes... Practice makes... Practice makes practice. Yeah, that's good. Tell you what, you can use my frisbee. It's got better grips than yours. There okay. you go. Bye. Oh, Dad! Hey, I'm getting better. <sighs> what is that racket up there? Oh, well, that's uh, Brian and his music. We tried not to be too hard on him, but this is getting ridiculous. I mean, if the rapture happened, we wouldn't even be able to hear the trumpet. By the way, where is Robert? That garage is still a mess. I think he's up there with Brian. Gee, it seems like ever since Brian's gone here, Robert has really gravitated to that guy. I just hope Brian's attitude doesn't rub off on Rom. Well, I think he's spending entirely too much time up there. And I have a feeling Robert is not influencing Brian. Well, we have never allowed that secular rock music in this house. And we're not gonna compromise now just because he's our guest. The whole spirit of that stuff is destructive and demonic. I mean, just look at Brian. He's in and out of juvenile court. He's terribly unhappy. He's just searching for his own identity. I need to go up and have a talk with him. I will not allow Brian to rub off on Robert. <laughs> Yourself. Take that earring off right now. We weren't hurting anything, Dad. Get up to your room, young man. I'll talk to you later. And wash that goo out of your hair. Man, Uncle John, don't you think you were a little rough on your son? Brian, I think I'm perfectly capable of raising my own son. Sit down, Brian. I want to talk to you. Listen, Brian. I don't know what you're used to, but around here we have a set of rules when it comes to music and clothes and most of all, attitudes. What attitudes? Oh, come on, Brian. You come to visit our family and try to turn my house into a rock arena and my son into some kind of a freak? Okay, fine. I'm through. I've had it. I'm splitting this place, man. Sit down, Brian. I can't wait to get... Sit down! Listen, we don't want you to leave. We just want you to understand that this is a Christian home. And Jesus Christ is first place around here. And we just want you to respect that. Okay, Uncle John. I'll be a good boy. All right. Listen, Brian, we're not trying to be mean to you. 
we love you, man. And more than that, and you probably don't even want to hear it right now, but Jesus Christ still loves you. me. Jesus Christ loves me. It's just getting a little bit too heavy around here for me. I'm split. Brian, where are you going? Shut up, Robert. You better not tell anybody. I'm leaving. You can just stay here with your goody-goody two-shoes family. I'm out of here. I cannot believe Robert. I'm on a grounding for the rest of his life. Mom, Dad, Brian's leaving. He just snuck out the window and he stole some of Connie's jewelry. Okay, Robert, you stay right here. You're in enough trouble already. Come on, Doug, let's go get him. This doesn't look like Kansas anymore. Oh, uh, Doug, did I score a touchdown? Oh, man, we need to get you inside and sit oh. down. Come on, man. Brian, can't you see you can't make it on your own? Man, you're hurting the people that, that love you the most. Stealing and running away. Oh, who loves me? Robert, you little squeal. Well, go ahead. Call the cops. Call the cops like my old man and get me locked up again. We don't want to get you locked up, Brian. Jesus said if you knew the truth, the, the truth would set you free. When are you going to stop running from him? Oh, sure, Uncle John. Come average-looking geeks like you guys. Listen to that gospel music that sounds like funeral marches. Wait a minute. Dad, can I go up into his room and talk to him for a minute? There's a video I want to show him. Sure, go ahead. This is not working. Come on, Brian. Let's go upstairs. And I'm going to go home and soak my head in ice. Oh. Come on in, Brian. Why don't you grab a chair or sit down? I want to show you something here. Listen, I know the way you've been feeling the last few days, and I know you've been really unhappy. So how would you know? I'm well, like this whole rock and roll thing you do. I mean, I know it's just a front. So what if it is, Doug? Maybe I don't know how to be perfect like you guys. Why don't you take off your glasses for a minute? Let me talk to you. Brian, if you were half as committed to Jesus as you are to rock and roll music, you wouldn't have the problems that you're having right now. And I'm not trying to sound like I'm preaching at you, but every one of us has an emptiness that only Jesus can fill. And you've been trying to fill your emptiness with music, and it's just not working. Look, Doug, I don't have anything against Jesus Christ, and your family's okay. But there's just no way I'm going to sit here and listen to a gospel quartet. And there's no way I'm going to change the way I look. Christianity isn't just how you look and what you listen to. I mean, what God's interested in is, is your heart. He wants your heart to be right. I think you've got the idea that Jesus has to be five years behind the time, some square old-fashioned guy. That's not the way it is. I want you to take a look at a video. I've got a music video here by Mylon Lefevre and Broken Heart, a Christian band. Oh, great. Will you look at it? Okay. All right, I'm going to put it in, man. This is great. You're going to love this. These guys are Christian? Man, they sound kind of like Journey. Well, they may sound like Journey, but I want you to know, man, they're different. Just listen to what they're saying.
wants you just the way you are. Why don't you stop learning from him? person's soul that lives on this earth. There's a war over your soul right now. Jesus Christ is fighting for the right to own and to be Lord over your life. And we need to give our lives to Jesus. Just like uh, Mylon said, we need to come home to him. There's a lot of young people maybe that are watching the program right now. Uh, maybe adults that are watching and you say, man, I, I, I've fallen away from Jesus. Jesus is calling you home. You know, there's really no reason not to serve Jesus. There's been other religious leaders come along and say, I, I have the way. You know, I, I know the truth. If you will follow me, I'll show you the truth or I'll show you how to find the way or, or I'll show you how to come to life. And many religious leaders have made claims like that, but Jesus was like no other religious leader, was like no other hero you could ever follow because Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. Jesus made it plain and simple. I am the only way to eternal life. I am the only way your sins can be forgiven. We can try to find eternal life, try to find good times and happiness in different things, but it will all come to one end, Jesus. He is the only way. We've got to give our lives to Jesus. Quit fighting against the stream of his love. I know that there's young people that in the last uh, few weeks have been uh, sensing the love of God coming your direction. There's, there's been young people out there who, who know that God is tugging on your heart. You've been convicted of your sins. And just like Mylon saying, he will remove your sins as far as the east is from the west if you'll just do one thing. And that one thing is found in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. It says, if you'll confess him as your Lord and believe in your heart that he's risen from the dead, you'll be saved. Confess Jesus. Say, Jesus, I make you my Lord, my master, the owner of my life. You'll be Lord. Nothing else will take uh, first place in my life anymore. And then believe that he's alive. And if you'll do that, I want to pray with you right now. And I want to pray for Christians out there that, that you, you may be serving Jesus and know Jesus, but your commitment hasn't been there. You need to come back to God. Let's pray right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I release these young people, these viewers, to receive your love and to follow you like they never have before, to make you their Lord, their Master and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.
something about what to listen to and what not to listen to this month and next month you don't want to miss it we've got russ taft as our special guest a special edition of muskogee vice we're going to be on location in colorado going to be a great time we'll see you then <laughs>